Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. In my last video, Alyssa Milano's Sex Strike, Who Will That Inconvenience, and there's a link to that in my description box below, I made the constitutional libertarian argument that since there is no language in the Constitution that authorizes the federal government to be involved in abortion in any way, it is then, under the Tenth Amendment, a power reserved to the states of the people. And I then said that with the landmark ruling in Roe v. Wade, it was made entirely unconstitutionally by usurping the powers of both the legislative and executive branches by creating law that did not previously exist. However, I am not a constitutional libertarian. I just like to make constitutional arguments because they're so freaking easy to make. What I really am is an anarcho-capitalist, which is one of the many branches of libertarianism, and frankly, discussing that is the topic of a whole other show. But suffice to say that I don't believe that any government, constitutional or otherwise, can possibly protect individual rights, no matter how well-intentioned that government may be. And now, of course, very recently, the topic of abortion has become extremely contentious due to laws passed in New York, Georgia, and soon Alabama, each with wildly differing ideas about whether abortion should be legal and under what circumstances. So where do I, as an anarcho-capitalist, fall on this subject both politically and personally? Understand, I do have sympathy for both sides. I understand the position of pro-lifers, who believe that a fetus is a potential human being and therefore has rights just as any other human being. And in fact, I know many libertarians, female ones at that, who fall on that side of the issue. But I also understand the position of pro-choicers, who believe that a fetus is not a human being and therefore has no rights beyond that which the mother chooses to give it. And I know many libertarians, men among them, who fall on that side of the issue. I simply look at it from a governmental perspective. Because whenever you give government, or beg it, to make decisions for another person, you automatically give it the ability to make that decision for you. And this will ultimately backfire on you. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. And indeed, I think the consequences of Roe v. Wade demonstrate this perfectly. We would not be in this contentious position today were it not for Roe v. Wade. You cannot expect government, constitutional or otherwise, to protect individual rights, no matter how well-intentioned it may be. So, while it will no doubt piss off about 100% of my audience, since most of you fall down on this one way or another, I'm going to tell you what I think from a political perspective. I don't think government has any place in this issue not at the federal, nor state, nor local levels, because I don't think government has any place. Period. I think that the problem is entirely soluble without government. I think that, you know, imagine for a moment that there was no law regarding abortion. Now imagine there's no law regarding with whom you must associate. Imagine it. It's easy if you try. Now imagine that you're pro-life and you run a grocery store, and someone who's pro-choice enters to buy groceries. Well, you are free to refuse service to them. And so they're going to have to go to elsewhere, some other grocery store. But if enough grocers refuse their service, or if other businesses refuse service, such as not renting apartments, denying them car loans, denying them mortgages, then that person is going to be forced by simple survival to adhere to the social standards around them or move. <laughs> Now imagine that you're pro-choice and you have a grocery store and someone who's pro-life enters to buy groceries. Well, you can refuse them service. They're going to have to go elsewhere for the groceries. And if enough grocery stores do it, or if other businesses refuse service, such as not renting to them, denying car loans, denying mortgages, then that person is going to be forced by simple survival to adhere to the social standards around them or move. <laughs> and I think in this particular case, what you really see is three geographic regions merge, with the east and west coasts being where people who believe are pro-choice uh, would go to live, and basically the entire rest of the country where pro-life people would live. And that would be absolutely fine. You see, there's no reason that everyone must be forced by government to agree with everyone else. So that's how you solve the situation without government. You simply allow people to exercise their freedom whether you like it or not, 
Because whenever you beg government to make a decision for another person, you automatically give them the, the ability to make that decision for you. And it will ultimately backfire on you. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. Now, this doesn't change my personal non-political position, as I mentioned yesterday, in Alyssa Milano's sex strike. Who will that inconvenience? <laughs> I am neither particularly pro-life nor pro-choice. There is, for me, a third possibility that no one ever seems to bring up. I am anti-stupid. Quite simply, with the rare exceptions of rape, incest, or medical emergencies, if you are too stupid to get a, a condom, which are incredibly cheap and free on many college campuses, or get on the pill or the patch, which are also extremely inexpensive, or use Plan B, another extremely inexpensive option, then I think you're fantastically stupid, and I don't really have any sympathy for you, regardless of your politics. This is not pre-1960, which was the year that the birth control pill was approved for contraceptive use throughout the entire United States. It is now 59 years later, and the pill has been in common usage since five years before I was born. If you can't figure out how to avoid pregnancy with so many options at your disposal, then I can consider you fantastically stupid. And what a shock. You know, brilliant science fiction author uh, Isaac Asimov used to say that violence is the last refuge of the incompetent. I say government is the first refuge of the stupid. Remember, when you beg a government to make any decision for another person, you automatically give it the ability to make that decision for you. And this will ultimately backfire on you. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. So that's all I really have to say about that subject for today. So thanks for watching. And please feel free to leave your comments. I'd love to see what you have to say. If you like what I'm doing, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would certainly appreciate your support, either via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of those in my description box below. So thanks for watching Tales from SYL Ranch. And remember, for a breath of fresh air, watch Tales from SYL Ranch where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.